Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending May 27th, 2017. This is going to be a single subject uh, TDD report and I'm not going to read off articles or anything like that. I'm just going to basically talk with you about an idea that I talked with another viewer about, my friend Tom. Uh, we got into a, a regular chat on, I think it was Google Chat, we were chatting back and forth and he talked about that on my last I think it was my last TDD report or the one before that. We had the uh, article about the lambs, the baby lambs being raised in artificial plastic bag wombs and that this is probably going to soon come to human beings and human beings would be um, doing, we'd be doing this with human beings the same way. And then we talked about uh, interstellar stellar space travel if we thought that was possible. And I was thinking there are quite a few engineering hurdles to overcome, for example, we have to, and it's probably going to take several hundred years to develop the technology to be able to get spaceships up to maybe one, two, three percent of the speed of light. And you've got to figure, too, the closest stars to us are like four, five, six light years away. We have some up to ten years, light years away, but then if you're only traveling at one or two percent of the speed of light, you're still talking about a trip that's going to be hundreds and hundreds of years. I mean, I, I think it's pretty realistic to look at any of the um, kind of voyages we can do even if we improve the engineering a lot would take several hundred years so that's going to be more than the lifespan of a, of a person and I think maybe at best we're looking at another couple hundred years maybe extending the lifespan past a hundred maybe people will live reliably and healthy up to an age of a hundred maybe even 110, 120 uh, and that may be a common thing but that's still not enough you, you take four generations of people living that long to reach some of the closest stars and I don't see anything as far as I know in the movies and especially the latest movie we had with uh, oh who was it uh, Mark Mark Wallenberg and uh, what's the other that famous girl whatever you know who I'm talking about they had a, a thing about them waking up on board a spaceship too that was doing interstellar travel and what they basically had was the the regular science fiction thing of human beings uh, adult human beings in suspended animation and pods I just don't see that as anything that's going to happen in the next a few hundred years. But there is one way we do, even nowadays, we have the technology to put human beings in suspended animation. And that is with, uh, with uh, maybe just uh, very, very uh, young fetuses where they're frozen and then thawed out later and implanted in a womb. And now that we have the technology to do the artificial womb, you could probably take a spaceship and you probably need still a large spaceship, let's say a, a spaceship that can handle maybe 30 to 100 people, but you wouldn't necessarily, you could take on board, you know, thousands of people in, in that form of frozen fetuses. You know, I know this has kind of got a creep factor, but I'm just talking about the science and the engineering. And I know uh, a lot of the things we do now in medicine would probably freak people out um, hundreds of years ago. You know, if we talked about uh, even the surgery that I've been through where they suck your lens of your eye out and put an artificial lens in. People have knee replacement, hip replacement with uh, metal and ceramics and plastic. I mean, that probably sounded creepy several hundred years ago. But uh, yeah, as far as the engineering, if you want human beings to actually last for the voyage, it would have to be in the farm right now. As far as uh, the only thing that's practical, it would have to be actually uh, frozen little babies before they're even, you know, ready to be born. And then what you would have to do along the way is... Uh, have robots take care of the spaceship and even eventually when you get close to the planet that you're going to go to have the robots actually start raising the children I mean doing all the tasks of raising it from a small child all the way up to a, a grown human being that can actually help out with the uh, uh, flying of the spaceship and setting up a civilization on a planet stuff like that and you would probably um, not do it all at one time you would slowly take more and more of the uh, embryos out and keep you know raising them and raising them in groups of I don't know 30, 40, 50, maybe 100 at a time to where you would have enough to inhabit the planet when you got there and uh, the other possibility if the robots couldn't handle it by themselves is you would actually have some people aboard the spaceship that would be born that would probably not, their destiny would never be to reach the final planet their destiny would be part of the crew uh, in between and they would just you know end up living and dying on the spaceship so you would probably want the spaceship to be a good enough size that for 30 to 100 people it would accommodate them you know in some type of you know luxury not maybe not luxury but at least you know some t something that would be you know enough space to uh, not go crazy I I'm sure before I'm even you know before we're even talking about this there's probably going to be all kinds of tests done um, with human subjects uh, in enclosed areas and stuff like that so I'm talking at least a couple hundred years in the future so by then I think 
they'll either determine it can't be done or they'll determine that the psychological problems of people um, being together, a group of 30 to 100 people being together in a large spaceship have either been worked out or they can't be worked out. So, um, Those are some of the different ideas. Now this is everything aside from coming up with some kind of warp drive. I still, myself, I see nothing but just uh, science fiction type of ideas. I still don't see anything practical from an engineering standpoint uh, unless we're very lucky um, to even come up with anything like warp drive to where we could cut down the times and get to uh, stars between four and ten light years away in any time like uh, you know doing it in two three four years like that like you know well I think Star Trek even does it faster than that I think they do it in a matter of hours but uh, I just don't see that happening I think the engineering is gonna have to be over I think the other thing that might be a possibility too is they may have to send multiple spaceships out too to multiple stars and maybe even multiple ones to the same stars because you're, you know, you're kind of putting all your eggs in one basket if you're just doing it for one shot and you're doing it especially for something like preservation or, or colonizing of human beings. Um, there's no guarantee that that one spaceship won't encounter some kind of troubles and stuff like that. But uh, another thing about keeping the size as small as practical and not having a lot of adult human beings on the spaceship is you can make it stronger and better shielded and stuff like that because there's when you're in outer space there's all kinds of cosmic radiation and things like that. It's a lot easier to shield a small spaceship than a, a gigantic, you know, um, almost like a space station that you would try to launch towards a star. Um, and the smaller it is, the less fuel you need to get it up to, you know, you're talking about a, an enormous amount anyway. That's why we'll probably never get, um, even if we do get up to one, two, three percent of the speed of light, we will probably never get up anywhere near 50 percent of the speed of light because the energy just gets so massive. I mean, by the time you get close to even 90 percent of the speed of light, I think even the the entire energy of our sun and several other stars, if you could put all that energy into just one spaceship, I don't think it would be enough because the energy just exponentially just goes up higher and higher and higher. So um, that may be our limits is one, two, three percent of the, the speed of light. And that may take some time too. It might be that the craft over a period of two, three, four years starts approaching one, two, three percent of the speed of light. So I don't know if you guys have any ideas about what you would think about it. I mean, my gosh, I've already gone over seven minutes with this. So um, what ideas do you think, even even wild outlandish ideas of what do you think engineering wise we could come up with in a couple hundred years as far as human beings and interstellar uh, space travel. I did do one TDD report where they talked about sending probes out. Um, they're talking about doing that in the next 10 years, very, very small size probes, sending them to some of the nearest stars, but totally different than human beings actually going to the nearest stars and colonizing any planets that may be around the stars and things like that. So give me your ideas in the comments if you can think about it. So that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.